Hello, everybody, and welcome back to Desks and Dorks, your favorite board game design and creation podcast that, as always, is shaped by you. We bring you the best at needy tabletop gaming. I'm Kyle Lott. I am the dork, and I am joined, as always, by... Hello, I am Riley, the desk. And it's been four weeks since the two of us have finally done a podcast together, and you... Honestly, could probably tell that if you had been sitting in and listening to the two of us talk like prior to this show. <laughs> it's, it's, it, it literally reminds me of like those two kindergartners that haven't seen each other like until after Christmas break. They're like, I got a Bugs Life backpack. I got a Transformer shoe. And they're just like going back. A single back and... shoe, only the left one. Well, yeah, because one of them is the trash can somewhere, like yeah. covered in paste. <laughs> but what's up, everyone? We're back. Uh, it's It's been a little bit. Um, we're gonna just. I think we're just talking this episode. <laughs> I be believe honest. we actually talked about game design. We did talk about game design, but first, uh, let's talk about what we've been playing recently. Um, or like, just let's just catch up. I, first I think and our, foremost, our, yeah, let's catch up. Have we really? Yeah, talked let's catch about up first. What desks and dorks is? Yeah, uh, we did. It's a indie tabletop design podcast shaped by you. We already went it over is, that in the is. intro. We, me- we mentioned that, but did we? Mention we did mention any, intro. anything about you know good old after the rain? Ah, uh, that is after at the rain. this point fulfilled to everybody that completed a kickstarter survey yeah so there's like so, 10 people that haven't yet and i'm and I reaching out to them pretend, daily don't you not daily uh, but periodically yeah. but i was just saying i'm pretty sure i can message some of them too to be like hey because some of them are my friends yeah yeah most yeah. of the worst offenders are people he knows uh not yeah. all of them though and that's okay but either i mean way, i love them if you're listening for giving us their money but like, and then Thank not you. actually caring if they get anything out of it. That's very nice. It's a genuine gesture. But like, we're a company. We'd like to give them the product they bought. I have them um, packaged with sticky note names on them, ready to go. Uh, and speaking of packages that you can buy, if you would like to go purchase a copy of After the Rain, you can go to our friendly local game store, Let's Play Games and Hobbies, here in Hanover, Pennsylvania. Or if you're a Maryland resident, you go to Games and Stuff. Uh, if you're in Colorado, you can go to the Gaming Annex or Total Escape Games. Sorry. Um, if you live in Canada or if you live in California, there's like four different stores between Concord, Burbank, and others that carry them. Thank you again to some of our phenomenal backers on Kickstarter. Uh, oh, and if you're in Michigan, uh, there's a great online store called RU Game that has plenty of re- retail pledges as well. So if you want to actually support a Michigan based business, you can go to RU Game too. So shout out to all the retail stores that backed us. We love you. We appreciate you. Um, can't wait shout out to it. tim over at total escape games who put us on his top shelf by the way we are above you like know, we're on the top shelf at let's play too just we like. are we are but like the top shelf at let's play makes me feel like i'm short um like you know what i mean you know this because retail but like eye level is by level yeah it's a little um, tall. it is uh, but like we're above like overlight and like like, like we're above like overlay and like some Warhammer RPGs. I'm like, yeah, that makes me feel, yeah, we did it. <laughs> Thanks, Tim. That's good. That's good. It's we appreciate it again. Uh, yeah, we have so. not yet initiated selling the PDF online, though that is something that we are again working on. There is just a few little edits that we wanted to make based on some feedback um, that we are still working through, as well as to our international backers. I am slowly looking at some solutions. Again, taking some time. I am going to be sending out a survey though for the physical interest form to our international backers and international yep. fans soon. So if you have not already, I can put it in here, but you can just go to desksanddorks.org. If you go into the After the Rain tab, it has an email sign up. You can actually sign up in there, and I'll be sending an email out to them um, about seeing whether or not you're interested in buying a physical copy and where you're located. Do you ever just like sit back and think, like, wow, we really did it? Like, I had that thought the other day, like, because I'm playing, like, obviously it was a like game night over at Let's Play, and we're just, we're just jamming out and playing some games, and, like, I just happened to look over the shelf, I'm like, oh, oh, that's our game, like, that's us, that my name's on that, on that front cover, we, we did this. Like, did you ever just sit there and, like, wow, I, I, uh, there are moments where I'm like, I still can't believe that that was, that's my real existence. Yeah. Yeah. It's and with cool. more products on the way, too, by the way, which is... Are we allowed to... Can we talk about our Welcome to Retail? I know we've kind of mentioned Welcome to Retail a couple times. We can times. talk about our next dollar RPG. So first yep. and foremost, we're going to go ahead and talk a little timeline. A uh, very, very brief timeline, meaning yes. once we get After the Rain PDF up for sale, we will then be looking at setting a date a few months afterwards for Welcome to Retail. Welcome to Retail, which is uh, the $1 one-page RPG that I've been working on to kind of coincide with uh, Red Panda Redemption. So you're basically working as a retail worker in a big box or retail store and is owned by the elder gods. Um, 
and I'm just excited. I think I, I don't know. It's inspired a little bit by uh, you know RPGs, kind of like the Dragon Age RPG, um, where like rolling doubles on d sixes matters. And yeah, I don't know. I'm I'm really excited. We've got a really cool artist. I, I think lined say, up to do. That's what I'm most excited for. Is it was really yeah. awesome. After the rain, we had Hannah. We had this graphic designer. It was phenomenal. It looked good. If you check on the Kickstarter page, even if you're not a backer, you can see the transition of some of the covers from before we had a designer to having one. But this is an R- a dollar RPG, our first dollar RPG that has art that isn't just something that we figured out between us. It's phenomenal. Yeah. That's yeah. Um it's all it's really cool. It's cool that we finally can like the artists want to work with us. It's just cool that people are playing. It it's all just man, it just comes in waves, man. It just yeah. it comes and goes in waves and I, I, I don't know. I'm I feel my I find myself being consistently grateful. <laughs> it's, it's, it's a nice place to be at. But all right, let's let's talk up some general stuff. Riley, have you been playing anything new, anything interesting? Is there any games you're excited for coming out? soon i know there's one that you're 100 <laughs> percent excited for um so i, I want to give you a chance to talk about it Ooh, so i can go ahead and say i have not been able to play games near as much as i want to and in fact am very saddened about that uh we have a couple games that we are waiting to play just for time purposes uh my wife and i mostly because she just picked up that wonderlands war game that we're waiting to play oh yeah alice in wonderland like Quacks and Quillenberg times 37 um, game, as well as I have a, a game for the podcast, a game for the podcast. I still need to finish playing and reviewing uh, for one deck dungeon that I'm looking forward to play. I've heard mixed reviews. Ooh, I love one deck. I love it. one deck dungeon. Yeah. I'm intrigued. That's so cool. Yeah. One deck dungeon such a great system. That's yeah. That's sick. But what, what Kickstarter game are you excited for? That's what I'm, that's what I'm well, leaning into. Not obviously because... that we're affiliated, uh, though I have tried. And yes, I have, have made tried. connections in with the company. Not yet paid off, but we are getting other games to review from them. We're getting God tier. Yeah, that the way to spoil it, Kyle. Yeah, yeah. And sorry. Well, I, get to the heroes. get to the game we want to hear about. But, I, I but want to listen Steam to Riley Forge gush about this. May thirty first, the game we have all been waiting for, and by all I mean me and other people that still don't have lives. RuneScape Kingdoms Shadows of Elvarg. Cannot yeah, wait. Buddy. RuneScape yeah. on the tabletop. I get to level skills. I get to level skills. And man, do I get to level skills. And play quests. And I'm, level I'm, skills. And level skills. I mean, I am wearing the same color shirt right now that my NPC, my PC in RuneScape wore when I went woodcutting. For the record, I would it's like the to generic point that out. bot look. That's exactly what Kyle looks like. It is right 100%. Here. I am, He's I am bald and everything. Big NPC energy right over here, baby. <laughs> I love the dudes from Steamforge too because I've met them a couple times working conventions and they're just such genuinely good dudes. Like I just I remember like going over and being like, "Hey, like I had wanted to try God Tier a while ago and I had I had kind of tried it a little bit, uh, but all we had to trade was like an open starter set of like Zombie Kids Evolution. They're like, yeah, just give it to us, man. We'll give you one. I was like, but they're not equivalent in value. Yeah, my kid wants it. Who cares? Are you, are you sure? Like, dude, it's fine. They're like, oh, hey, don't worry about it, by the way. I know we were only going to trade for, like, one incomplete starter set. We found a complete starter set for you. Don't worry about it. It's all good. Have a great flight home. I'm like, you guys are great. That's phenomenal. <laughs> like, and I am excited to try God Tier a second time, um, especially with you, because, like, I feel like skirmish games with you are going to be fun. So I can't wait. Yeah, I'm, I'm pumped. It's going to be sick. And we got some um, of the different, like, heroes. We got some other games, again, for the podcast I'm looking forward to, or for the show, for the YouTube channel, deskandorks.com. Or, no, wow. YouTube.com slash deskandorks. Though you can go to deskandorks.com and our YouTube channel you can. is linked on there. Social media. You page. absolutely can. Um, and I, you, I'm Kyle? excited to start doing reviews for, like, games again. It's been fun to, like, review my own collection and kind of, like, go through stuff. But, man, I'm pumped to just do new games. I know there's like, one that you can't wait that I have I, sitting th- in my in my uh, tavern I, right now. I mean, there are. <laughs> Like, we got sent Dive Diamonds, which is, like, a pool game, which is such a, it's such a, like, it feels like such a flex for us. I'm going to be completely and totally honest, because the, there's, it's, it's board game adjacent, right? So, basically, what it is is these, like, it's these, like, pool toys, essentially, that has a game that goes along with it. So, dear listeners, when I tell you that my brother and I wasted so much of our lives on pool rings in the summers, and that I am 100% hyped to just review this pool side, like, 
I'm some sort of desks and dorks James Bond. I'm pumped. I like. I think it's such a flex on our part that like some companies like, hey, you know what? We know it's not board games, but you know who does reviews? Desks yeah. and dorks. Well, do you guys want a plethora of pool diamonds? Yes. A reminder, As a matter of fact, I, I do. We have worked with this company before. So we for have. those of you that may remember, and if you haven't yet, we'd love for you to check it out. Starlux Games came out with a game called Dark Ridge Reunion, which is yes. a murder mystery style you know, big open, you play in a house or you play in an open space that has kind of secluded areas. Um, one of those kind of real world experience mystery games, which uh, I remember you liked quite for. a bit based on the review. I enjoyed it. It was, yeah. it, it was an enjoyable game. Um, not least of which it came with a foam dagger that lit up and you could stab people with, but yeah, which, you know, but I mean, it was an enjoyable game. Come. I recommend checking out the review if you kind of want the full rundown of it a little bit, but they, I guess apparently also liked the review. Um, and, they reached out to us and actually just sent me like a single dive diamond in the mail and was like, does this intrigue you? Cause we'd send you the whole set. And I'm like, yeah. And yeah, because Kyle yeah, was flipping out when I showed him. I thought it was so funny. Like I, I like just the idea that, I don't know. The thing I think that I like about what we do is we're niche, right? Like, I don't know. Dusty, like we don't make games for everybody. Like, like after the rain, is not a game for everybody. Obviously, it's a game that's open to everyone, but it's not a game that's going to appeal to everybody. And I like that we're becoming a place where people are going to send us weird off the wall stuff yeah. um, because they and they know that we're going to be honest about it. Um, so if I don't like Dive Diamonds, I'm I'm going to be honest about it. But I really love and appreciate that there's a company that's like, hey, what if we can push board games a little bit and make like a pool toy game? I'm like, I'm in. Like, what a sweet idea. I had not considered that. That's dope. <laughs> I'm ready. Like, I don't know. I just, that excites me so much. Yeah, and even though, I mean, realistically, it's not very board related, but it is game related. That's the thing. It's, it's again, it's pushing the media, which yeah is great. Any expansion can be good expansion to a certain extent. Yeah, and, and honestly, here's the thing, right? Like, even if something sucks, this is something I talk about um, in the designer postmortem for After the Rain, and it's still something I think holds true. I would so much rather people take a huge swing on a game and then miss than make the same garbage over and over and over again. We, you know how many party games we've reviewed? Like, yeah. my, my brain ones, melts. But... There are some good ones, but there's nothing exciting or different or interesting about that, that genre Sometimes or that medium anymore. Sometimes it's just anymore. a dumpster fire that costs you $90 for a plastic dumpster, but there's no yeah. reference involved there. No, none. None that I'm going to say. That's for darn sure. <laughs> um, I don't like Yeah, I don't know. So, I'm really excited about that, too. So, um, in terms of games that I have been playing, uh, I finally tried my hand at Dead of Winter. Um, surprisingly good. I'm interested to give it another try. I don't think we played every part of it quite right. Um, it was cool, though. Like, I enjoyed it. Um, introduced a friend of mine to the Duke Lord's legacy, which is an amazing, honestly, it's just better chess. I'll just say it. It's just better chess. It's so cool. And I love it. And, uh, my dear friend Riley bought me this or got me this when he was working in and by uh, this, Baltimore because no one can see this. I mean, I'm still going to hold it up because I love it just for, you know, shake. So this is a wonderful game called diver down deep, which is legitimately just a really simple, trick-taking game where you are trying to take the hand of numerically valued cards in your hand and then get them underneath eight so that you can attempt a dive which is then going to get you a treasure card if you get 10 treasures you win the game it is so simple but i'll be honest i had more fun with this dumb little box than i've had honestly with like the last big amounts of games that i have played like i'm not going to say that i enjoy diver down deep more than i enjoy dead of winter but i kind of did <laughs> Like, I don't, I don't, I don't know. Um, what else did I try? Um, we tried Aztlan, which is actually really good. Um, it's an Ares game one. It's like an area of control game that you run as Aztec tribe, which is okay. kind of sick. Um, I haven't tried it at the higher player counts. And to be quite frank, I don't know if it's going to be good at the higher player counts, but this is the thing that intrigued me the most, Riley, is when you play two players, there's not enough of each of the four color tribes to support the amount of people you have to put on the map for the game to function. And so what you do is you switch tribes every other round. Hmm. And so there's a mechanic where when you fight, you can either conquer or coexist. So if you win a battle against a group of people in the same tribe, you can allow them to occupy the same territory as you, which is super interesting because then you get a prosperity card, which are like powerful 
abilities or like passive abilities that affect you for the rest of the game or extra victory points at the end of the game. So it's really there's a really nice tight little balancing act there. Uh, but what's interesting is because you have to switch to the other tribe every other turn, it makes like wiping people out not a very viable prospect. And I loved that. I thought that was such an interesting way to balance combat. And I'm worried that when I play it with three and four players, it's not, it's going to lose that nuance. Um, because at two players, I was like, this is really cool. Because there were a couple times I'm like, I could absolutely just shred everybody. But then I realized I was going to shred the tribe that I started with. And the game takes place over five rounds. And I'm like, oh my, cr- I'm like, crap. If I shred everyone in this map, I'm going to wind up with the exact same group of people that I've just destroyed. And that's going to kill my end game scoring potential. Um, so it, I, I don't know. That was such an interesting game for me, especially because I didn't really like Ares games. Uh, last one that I tried, which was Masters of the Night. Um, rest in pasta. What else did we try? Oh, have you ever played Batu, Riley? I have Storm not, though. I saw Lord? you've been enjoying it. I did. I, I So I put it up for consignment over at Let's Play. Um, and I'm going to be honest, though. I actually thought about hanging on to it. It is, and I, I kid you not, just easier to teach faster to set up risk and it's a faster play like if you said i want a game that feels like risk but takes me half the time and half the teach it's batu i don't have room for that in my particular collection because like it's just not the kind of game that appeals to me anymore but i will play that game over risk every day of the week and twice on sunday like it it's so simple and there's like a fun thing where you build the city that you're going to conquer beforehand So like you kind of have an idea of where some things are, but you're not sure which one is which. Um, I I just I thought the game was actually surprisingly neat. It has like a five point five right now on uh, Board Game Geek, and that feels kind of right, I guess. Um, but like it's like a six for me or like a seven for me, honestly, because it's just like if you you know, there's a lot of people for whom like risk is an itch that you need scratched. And if that's an itch you need scratch, that's a better game, in my opinion. I I thought it was super cool. It comes with all these little tiny horse lowered figures, like little oh, Mongo man. figurines. I don't know. You mentioned risk and you know you know I zone it. I know. I knew but like and again, like Jeremy and I played it, a friend of the show who was on our um It's a Wonderful World episode. And I'll be honest, like we weren't like blown away, but I was like, you know what? If you were a risk fan, this is this would be your game. Like, I don't know. I, I enjoyed it. So uh, I think it's all like the board game board games that I'm I'm playing, at least the ones that I'm allowed to talk about right now. Cause there's some ones that I can't. Um yeah. yeah, but that's okay. Um which brings us to the next part of our episode. Riley, what are we what are we talking about now? Now that we've got a little we had a little after the rain uh catch up and we talked about games, talked about stuff we're gonna be doing. Well, I think if we're gonna be talking about stuff that we're gonna be doing, we should probably talk about game design. Yeah, we probably should. It's a pretty big part of us. It is a game design. Um, I don't know if that's the direction you were going. It is. Oh, I know it was. Uh, So if we're going to talk about game design, you know, because we are a board game design and creation podcast, uh, which may be hard to believe sometimes, uh, we decided maybe maybe we should talk about some game design. Just a little bit, you know, some designer, I don't know, throw around, so to speak. Not a speed run or not a, not, you know, a. No desks and dorks in the goblet of lightning pitches, but still one of my favorite episodes that we've ever done. But that's uh, let's talk about some game design, Kyle. Let's do some game design, even I would say. I yeah, I'm a hundred percent. So we started goofing around, I guess, before the show, shocking to everybody, and we're like, what if we just talk about fun? Because the one the one dollar one page role playing game thing has been uh, kind of a success for us. I think um, it just it's nice because like you know who doesn't have a dollar to blow. And like, if you're going to play, uh, you know, a role playing game, you can play it for a dollar with some friends. You can enjoy it, and then even if you never touch it again, you could just print it off, put it in a binder, and then you know, if you're running like a game night, or I know a lot of GMs who work in the convention circuit, um, will just have like a binder of one shots. So like, if you know, they're manning like an open game table over at like Origins or things like that, then they can just whip one out and they can just play one, and so. Uh, obviously welcome to retail is going to be our next one, which I, <laughs> I'm so excited about, um, that we just thought maybe, you know, let's, let's talk a little bit about some, some interesting one shot role-playing game ideas. Um, and we'll roll those around and yeah, roll those around spelled R O L E 
uh, <laughs> and then kind of go on from there. So, ooh, before we do though, uh, shout out, of course, we're going to be in the ninth level games, uh, role playing game anthology. Oh, for the we free ta- um, RPG day. Yes, for free RPG day, which we have not talked about yet in the podcast, but our two player only RPG called Vessel got selected to be a part of that, which is super exciting. Uh, like Heather's a great person, so you know, pumped to be a part of that with her. Um, it might see the light of day as a more fleshed out desks and dorks title down the road, but I, I don't know. I'm just excited. It's going to be in there. That's, that's cool for me. So yep. that's excited to see. Hopefully there'll be some stores near you doing free RPG day. It's one of those yep. things that a lot of people do free comic book day, comic stores, but not a lot of people do free RPG day. So I know like our local game store was not going to do it until he found out why he should do it. Yeah. Cause we're going to be there. So yeah, which is sick. Um, all right, so the first one we talked about, and it's such a funny one that like I, we have to mention it. I think at the start was we were talking about like cleaning gutters essentially, and we're like, what if there was an RPG where you're just one dude who is the only like sibling in a mafia family that's actually running a legitimate business? Well, somebody's got to run the front, so a Some, true right. front doesn't succeed without it being a functioning business, right? Right. So here we have Joe. Joe, a normal a normal man, or whoever you want to play as, of course. Yeah. But Joe was our sample character. Um, Joe runs a gutter cleaning visit business. As simple as that. I mean, you can't launder money if you're not bringing in money, right? To right. an extent. Uh, you have to have a valid LLC. You got to pay a level of taxes. Come on. You can't be nefarious across the board. I mean, the IRS is how they got Capone, so like... It's true. It's true. So the tax man coming. Lesson. Um, and Joe just really loves his job. Yeah. Um, he does. So, yeah. I, I love it. <laughs> the idea of just being like, hey, listen, and I, I I can't go to the thing tonight. I got to – listen, I have a better homes and bureau meeting. I got to be at the um, – like a PTA meeting. Or I got to be the homeowners association meeting. What do you mean I can't have a 20-foot sign on the front of my business? I'm paying for the zoning ordinance. <laughs> like I just – Hey, uh, you you want we should take? No, I don't want you to shoot the person. It's a it's a, a, a homeowners association meeting. I'll just go. I'll grease a few palms. I'll eat one of Meredith's terrible finger sandwiches, and we'll be on with our life. Not everything has to get out of here. I got get a reputation, man. Yeah, I got a reputation. We got to do the rep. Like, I own a business. I am the face of this business, Tony. Tony, you can't take this away from me. Listen, I understand that you all bring in so much money every year with heroin, but here's the thing. I am up for a Chamber of Commerce Award this year. And I'm going to speak at a Rotary Club dinner. So if you could maybe, for five seconds, not shoot someone in the face so that I can go and eat undercooked Panera Bread food, that would be lovely. Like, I I just love this idea so much. (laughs) This will be a very, very short, not a one page. Can we just make a paragraph, a paragraph RPG, and we will post this for free. Let's do it. I... I think for free RPG day, I think I'm, I will have to tell you what, you not only is this going to be for free RPG day rally, I think I'm just going to make it timed. So it's literally rather than a whole game, it's just one argument between the person running the legitimate front and, and the everyone person else not. is two plus <laughs> We're players. Call it Everybody else is the mafia. <laughs> We're just, Oh my God, dude. I love that so much. <laughs> like, I thought, dude, the more I think of I yeah, this is happening. That's so good. What day is free RPG day now? I got to look this up, so I got to make sure that this is done for the desks and dorks family. For the members of the dad bod. I hate that you remember that was a thing. June 25th. June 25th? That All right, June 25th, everybody. Um, you can expect uh, Gabagoolies, <laughs> the, the mobster argument game. <laughs> 30 seconds. On Saturday, the 25th of June, 2022. That's... Dude go <laughs> so um tangentially related to um like mafia and also um <laughs> free rpg day the <laughs> the new magic the gathering set came out uh recently which is Yuka streets of Pena. new Penna, uh which is a, a very interesting idea conceptually because it's a, essentially it's a mob plane um that is run by demons uh which i think is hysterical and if you go watch the trailer for it, I don't know who you are, random commenter, but the top comment under the trailer for the streets of New Capenna literally just says, there's a lack of gabagool, but I'll allow it. And I 
lost it. I was like, that one comment is better than this entire trailer as like a lifelong Sopranos fan. I was like, that's amazing. And the fact that they didn't make a Gabagool reference at all in the set is a wasted opportunity. So I got you, Tony Soprano stands. I got you. We, we're doing this for the Jersey mob, baby. I love this. I love this so much. I can't. Wait. Oh, man. <laughs> I can't. I'm sorry. Like, I know I'm supposed to recover or, like, we should transition, but the more I think about this game, the more my brain is like, what if you just don't function right now? Because that is so funny. I mean, as we discussed, like, I really think uh, we had talked about just doing a, a complete episode solely talking about that and then decided that's not quite it. But, yeah. It's been living I mean, pretty rent-free in our mind. It Like, the last 20 minutes, I'm just like, this is so fun. It literally just... Make a mob. It's just going to be like two D6 charts and then a paragraph on rules. Yeah. And a line that just says, don't be a jerk, even though this is a fake argument. Don't be a jerk. That's it. It's well, going to yeah. be the whole game. Yeah. And I can't wait. Like, that's going to be our unofficial official offering because yeah. we technically have an official offering. We do. We do in the form of Vessel, which is great. I, that's a game, too, that like, I wish it wasn't so short. Like, I, like, I wish I hadn't hit on what I wanted so quickly. Because I'm like, man, if I could just make it longer, we can make it a full release. And we might still, but like, I love, I love the idea of a two player RPG. I like, because, you know, some days you don't have a full party. And scheduling's hard, man. Scheduling's really hard, especially for role playing game groups. It's like hurting kittens. I mean, you know that. Although your your RPG group seems pretty good about scheduling. Yeah, I'm about to ruin it after three years and some three and a half years, but it's fine. I mean, like, is this the group that you do with Randy, or is this the group? No, because you guys, yeah, it has to be, because you haven't been doing the one with Marissa and uh, your wife and uh, Sam Others. for, like, that long, right? Yeah. Yeah. No. yeah. So, Man. It's, yeah, we've been we've been successfully doing a group since I moved back to the state of Pennsylvania. That's every crazy, other week, dude. Every other Thursday. for that multiple, I mean, is... we've been in Waterdeep. We've been in Eberron. We've been in... God, I'm still on RuneScape. I want to say Mauritania. Um, uh, the swamp, the swamps, the swamps. Um, yep, that one. Uh, Baro- that really... no, it's not Barovia, right? Because that's I no, mean, Strahd Barovia has a lot of swamps. Strahd, but no, that's I'm running that campaign with my other group. Right, 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 right. Swamps. Why can't I think of the swamps? It's it was uh, like a is it thing. is it Faerun? Is it Faerun? That's like a world. It's in. Faerun, no, I know, though, but yeah. isn't there a big isn't there a big swamp thing in Faerun though? Yeah, there is. It's a. Uh... Oh, Am God. I wrong? Oh, I can think of Swamp Lettuce. Again, that's Rudescape. That's not... <laughs> swamp Lettuce. Oh, big sea. rest. There's like a C there, you know? It's pretty yeah. cool. No, I mean, it makes sense. It's, uh... Wow, not even the internet helps me here. Salt Marsh. I, so salt Marsh. Swamp... Oh, Salt Marsh! Yeah, the Swamp. Are you wearing Ghosts of Salt Marsh? Yeah, Ghosts of... No, 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 we did at one point. Take a brief. I mean, or did we you do like actual like OG? Furnace. This is the city in Dungeon Master's Guide to Salt Marsh. No, we did Fifth Edition Salt Marsh, and then okay. decided because like that, the Abyss and Avernus was more fun. Yeah, I mean that makes sense. Well, Salt we did Marsh Avernus, and then decided kind of that was less fun, so we just transitioned yeah. into the Abyss from Dragonlance. I mean, fair enough. I'm excited that we're getting on the topic of that stuff. Like, I know you're super excited for Spelljammer, but like, man, if we're getting Spelljammer. We're also Bro, we might get Lance. Dark Sun. I I don't know about Dark Sun. Yes. It's so Dark Sun is one of those things that I I don't know if it's going to bring enough to the table right now. Is the biggest I thing. So like Spelljammer like... makes sense. The reason you bring Spelljammer is because they're bringing so many multiverses, so many worlds. You got to tie them together if you want to keep them cohesive for people that want that. And Spelljammer. Spelljammer already exists. They're making some changes to it to make it fit into the current 5th edition lore. Eh, it's fine. There's a couple things I'm happy about, a couple things that are kind of saddening, but understandable why they're doing it. And, you know, they're still coming out with it, so I can't wait for it. I guess guess my my biggest worry with them, uh, my only reason, I guess, like, why I don't want them to do Dark Sun is, especially for 5th edition, I always feel like, I don't even know. I always feel like 5th edition tends to sand off all of the edges of its games, um, which is, is fine, right? They want to draw the biggest possible net. But, like, man, how are you supposed to sand off any of the edges to Dark Sun? Like, to the chat, that, like, how? You know, 
talking about RPGs, talking about game design, uh, we'll have to play a game of Planet Dirt with you at some point, Kyle. I would like to play Planet Dirt. That sounds cool. It's like Planet Dirt is our fifth edition adjacent campaign that we started just for for fun, where okay. everybody gets a you roll up a, a class and then you get a D four of sorcerer levels, all wild magic. One hundred percent of the time, wild ma- when you cast a spell, cantrip anything, wild magic happens. Off of the 10,000 chart, Ooh. where when you roll a 10,000, the world explodes. People turn to, to stone when they sleep. Anytime you sleep, maybe you're just in the abyss for eight months because it's a month for every hour. I don't know. Maybe a hand reaches from the sky, picks you up, and decides you're just not the right one and puts you back. Anything could happen on planet Dirt in this ravaged this, land. This feels like... Did you play Skyrim? I was never a big fan of Skyrim. I was okay. one of those people. So it's okay. But in Skyrim, one of the best missions ever, and spoilers coming up for Skyrim if you somehow have not played the only Ooh, game that I haven't has installed put out. my toaster yet, Kyle. Um, in yeah, <laughs> the fact that you can actually play Skyrim on a smart fridge now is one of the greatest things that has happened in the Western world. Um, but there is a mission where you go out drinking. And you lose a drinking contest to this random dude and you black out and then you the the rest of this mission is just utter nonsense, right? It is you trying to figure out and retrace all of your steps. Well, it turns out that the person you went drinking with is uh Sawain or Sam not Sawain. What is his name? His name is Sam Hain. He's Sanguine, that's what it is, who is the Daedric Lord of Chaos, right? And he gives you a staff called the Wabajack which is just the best name objectively for anything. Um, But it is a magic staff, Riley, that unlike every other magic staff in the game that has a set number of charges, the Wabajack has unlimited charges. And unlike all of the other staffs in the game, which come like pre-programmed with a spell, the Wabajack just says, here's every spell in the game. Or not every spell in the game. Here's a random list of like 40 different things that can happen. Any one at a time? Yep. Which also sounds like a great like wabajack sounds like a great idea for a role-playing game yeah that might like, be trademarked that, we'll have to look into that it might be but like i i think we can come up with some other nonsense word like giggly gloop or something like just the idea that everyone is a wizard and you're just all such forces of chaos that you don't care anymore like racks me up i think that is the funniest thing and that sounds like such a fun time though you're like, what if I punch someone and I, I chain lightning? What if I attempt to like hurt somebody and instead of hurting them, they get uh what is it like a like a cure moderate wounds or something? Like yep. that just sounds what awesome. If, what if I cast light and somewhere a mother who is excited to finally bring her child into this world, one of the few new humans to be born, it's actually a demon instead of a human being, baby. We got real dark there, but that's also one Happy of the Mother's roles. Day, everybody. <laughs> Happy Mother's Day, everyone. Happy Mother's Day. Um, uh, we're a few okay, days so late when this posts, but not on the we, recording. We day. have it is Mother's Day at the time of recording, everybody. But so, uh, Happy Mother's Day to all of the demon moms and all of the regular moms <laughs> as well. Um, just know that we appreciate you, and uh, you know if raising a child is hard, raising a spawn from the underworld is probably very difficult as well. So we feel for you. Um, but in any case, I love the idea of random spell slinger the RPG. I think that's great. Um, I love, <laughs> still love Gobagoolies. Um, do you have another random idea that we could just workshop? Because I have one more before we we, uh, we kind of I mean, move we into. We just the, talked about this one here, so we can go Twilight. ahead and move to yours. Uh, you got to keep in mind that most of my quote unquote game ideas are just fifth edition RPG things that I've done because we've done a lot of that. I don't know if I mean, you know this or not. There's I oh I do having sat in on one of your sessions I can only Mecha imagine suit role playing is my favorite but that's a story for another day. Wait what what role playing is your favorite? Mecha suit role playing that's the one that my oh. buddies and I made where you literally use the one one forty fourth scale D and or uh, Gundam models as your minis and we used oh fifth God. edition as a baseline with certain math and adjustments to make it so that it is literally yeah. And see, this is the stuff, this is why I think that, like, people need to just divorce themselves from 
the conventions of of modern Dungeons and Dragons. This is the stuff that like I feel like we did as kids and teenagers. Like there's that meme from Invincible where it's like, look at what they need to to even mimic a fraction of our power, Mark. And it's it's like the the jet planes going by, and it just says like a DM with D and D Beyond hooked up to individual tablets for each player, an LED table, um, six dice towers, yada yada yada. And then under over Omni Man's face, it just says my friends and I with old coins and a checkers board. And I'm like, yeah, that's, that's, that is the, that's the magic of role-playing for me. And I feel like, man, I just miss that. Like I miss going to a campfire and being like, we only have a second edition player's hand handbook and we only have a 3.5 monster manual, but gosh, darn it. It's going to work. Our fighter might have four hit points, but our level one wizard is definitely casting ice storm. Yeah. (laughs) Like I, to this day, I have never had more fun than that. Like than those, those kinds of campaigns. And so I don't know. I dude, homebrew stuff. Like even if, there are people who play D and D who listen to our podcast. Tell them a homebrew thing. I think that's a cool idea. Yeah, homebrew is beautiful. I love homebrew so much. But I've gotten to a point in my life where I can't run a homebrew campaign anymore. I just don't have the time. So yeah. I do a lot with homebrew on the side, so to speak. But. As far as running a consistent campaign, yeah. We do a lot of one-shots of homebrew. That's an easy thing to get into. And I still think 5th edition, even more than some because of its ease of getting into, is actually really easy to homebrew. Yeah, it is. Not as many people are – I don't want to say aware of it, but it's a – you know, to a lot of people, it's a new hobby. I think it's easier to homebrew because, like I said, they, they have a tendency, it seems like, to sand off all the rough edges. Yeah. Um, and homebrews tend to be rough, but they tend to be exciting and unique. And I feel like it's easier to restore them to like a blank canvas. Yeah. So, which is a positive for fifth edition. So good on you, fifth edition. Unintentional, I'm sure, but good for you. Yeah, it does the job. It does it well. Uh, on the topic of fifth edition too, I run the kids D&D group, obviously, for those of you who are listening. And uh, this Sunday, or this Saturday, the one of the kids wanted to try DMing. Um, and so dressed up like the Grim Reaper, because that was going to be an NPC in one of his campaigns. He made a fake potion out of like hand sanitizer and had like a bandolier with it Good. across his chest. I'm like, he wore makeup. He committed to the whole bit. Like it was spectacular. I was so proud. Good. I was like, this is great. Um, Honestly, if I'm doing one more, we'll do one more idea, I guess, before we, you know, go to our closing thoughts are of course the random question that I have to ask Riley every show. Um, But there is uh, a wonderful graphic novel that as far as I know, only got one issue. Um, and it, it, it's in, it's wholly in Spanish, right? Um, and it's Los Tiempos Finales, which is l- r- roughly translated to English, the end times. Um, and it's just about like a, a wandering priest who just goes and banishes demons in these like small out of the way villages in rural Mexico. And that's a really specific niche. I realize. But, like, man, is that cool. I remember reading that book and being like, this is the coolest thing. It's so weird and so unique. And the art style is, like, I don't want to call it Wind Waker, like, like Legend of Zelda-esque. But it's it's almost, it's cartoony to the point of being almost too cartoony, where it's, like, kind of unnerving. Which I thought was a really interesting stylistic choice. Because you're like, this is really goofy. Oh, wait, this is too goofy. Ugh, I don't like that. What, like, I don't know. It's the right around. It's the right amount of Mickey Mouse meets the right amount of The Exorcist. Um, and I, I've I just never think that thought in my life I would hear those two words combined together. I Kyle. never thought I'd say the, that sentence. It makes me feel good to quote to quote Bo Burnham. Anytime I feel like I'm losing my place in the world and I'm just a pawn in Jesus and Satan's backgammon game, I like saying sentences that have never happened before. So I feel like I've said one today, but I just, I think that's like such a cool idea in my game. I don't know. I feel like I would make them like roving mariachis who just like play music, but also banish demons. Cause I just, I think that's awesome. Um, all bard yeah, party. All bard party. That's it. All bard party. That's gotta be a game in and of itself. That's going to be <laughs> all bard party. AKA all of the best episodes of the Witcher series because Yaskier is a, a phenomenal bard. It is. I don't think there's actually a game called All Bard Party. 
as weird as that is. Hmm. There is one called Bard Party, hmm. though. Interesting. All Bard Party, you say. Mm-hmm. Not trademarked, you say. Well, okay, I haven't went that deep into the the, the lore, so to speak, of <laughs> into all, the lore. The What's lore the of lore all? of trademark law? That's a, dude. There's got to be good lore in the in the realm of copyright disputes. What's the lore? Some dude gets banished from the lawyers' council. He's not like a master lawyer. We grant Kyle, you the rank Kyle, of master. Kyle. What you don't is this thing? One of them. <laughs> we don't want to be banished, Kyle. They're just there's a group of barristers. The bar is literally just a bar. Yeah, it's painful. <laughs> they just hit you with it. It's very painful. That's incredible. Um, <laughs> I love it. Uh, Riley, any other closing thoughts before we we move on? We wrap up. We we give the people what they what they're missing. You know, guys, we appreciate you checking us out. I know it's been an interesting couple weeks with uh, one thing after the other going on between us. But uh, thank you again for listening in, hanging out. Thank you again for everyone that supported us, as always, for After the Rain or Red Panda Redemption or our upcoming projects. We can't wait just to in share general. them with you. Well, in thanks, general. For being, thanks for being supportive, everybody. We have really good fans. We really do. It, I don't know. It feels it feels weird to say that, but like, because it is, you know, like I said, it's a small niche community, but like, man, I feel, I feel really supported most days, like in what Desks and Dorks does. Yeah. No, it's awesome. And speaking of fans, uh, if you're old like me and you remember when Facebook had to become a fan button and you're not already liking us on Facebook, you can relive those memories by going to facebook.com slash desk clicking the like button, which is kind of like the become a fan button, but less dangerous because there's not a 13% chance that you'll turn into a physical metal object. That's true. Uh, in- Instagram.com slash desks and dorks. Twitter.com. I can't say dot apparently. Dot com slash desks dorks. Look us up on YouTube. YouTube.com slash desks and dorks. You could do uh, desksdorks.org, listen in to any of our things by our social media link. Check out our games. Just check us out. We'd appreciate it. And, of course, if you're not already, you can listen to us on any of your favorite podcasting apps or services just by searching Desks and Dorks. Thank you again, guys. I know we have a weird question from Kyle, but this we is do. really the part that you wanted to listen through. Until yeah, then. it's true. I, I, as you know, all joking and, and gobble-gooling aside, um, it means a lot that people are, like, so kind and reasonable and, like, want to help support us and uh, that's cool so uh riley are you ready for the weird question before we wrap up for the evening i am never ready for the weird question let's go (laughs) i don't even know if i'm ready for the weird question to be completely honest um if walmart had to go back to passing out a sticker and it wasn't the smiley face sticker that they used to pass out which by the way walmart bring that back if you're going to be uh, evil corporate overlords just bring back the smiley face sticker at least roll, like like lean into it all right you know? can i can i go into your weird question can i interrupt it real quick with the fact yes. that you realize that the smile is actually trademarked by, by the smiley company no and walmart stopped doing the stickers because they do- they stopped wanting to pay that so the company that i work for which doesn't matter I don't say companies I work for on here, especially because I won't be working for them much longer, sadly. Right. Uh, just for other options, other choices. Life happens. You find new opportunities. Good choices. Um, did a choices. collection with them. Yes. But the Smiley Company is its own company that owns that trademark. That is the whole reason Walmart stopped because they had to pay royalties and such. Not royalties, so to speak. But they had to pay with those stickers that company a certain amount to use them. That is more interesting than the weird question. I have never known that. That's insane. Yeah. Well, couldn't they just design like a like a like a trademark non specific smile? Have you ever seen Walmart? Uh, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Fair enough. Fair enough. Fair enough. Yeah. Why would they? Good do point. That? It's cheaper just to do it. Like just yeah. pay them or just not do it. Yeah. That's okay. Yeah. yeah. That's not unreasonable. Um. All right, Riley. What what sticker do you want? Ooh, like what would they feasibly do or what do I want them to do? What do you, what, what, what would you want them to replace it with? Let's money right. is no object unless you're the smiley company. Apparently. <laughs> exactly. Uh, you know, the one thing that always made me happy about Walmart when I was a kid was the $5 cookie packs that you could buy. There's the big yeah. box of cookies. They still exist. They do. Um, Are they still $5? Just, yeah. Nice. At least they were last I checked. It's been a couple months. Okay. You, know, you never well. know. Uh, I just want that cookie with a $5 sticker on it. I want a sticker that says, put your cart back, you heathen. 
Well, they, that's what I want. They can't do that, but they gotta have a picture of a cart in a cart I, corral. It frustrates me to no end. Not a smiley face. We already talked about that. But put their carts away. Put your carts away. That is like the bare minimum you can do to not be a garbage person. Put the cart away. Oh, that's we're not it. going into the politics of putting back your cart. We're not. There's politics. There's no politics. Put the cart away. Well, no. the The entire definition of a society of seeing how you f- would function in certain types of society is actually based on the cart test. It's a litmus test of morality. I I I am I am in favor of that. Yeah, I don't when know you said you morality, I thought you I, when you said politics, I know because I thought that's what you were talking about at first. And I was like, because I've heard that right. Where like yeah. if you can't put the card away, you are not a functioning member of the society. The that's why. It, no, it's so it's whether or not you're able to self-govern is yeah. the traditional way of looking at it. Sorry, guys, the desks and dorks got really interestingly factual at the end. I, I said no, I'm listen. with it because also, by the way, Texas, y'all need to fix yourselves because I went to an H.E.B., which is like, by the way, an incredible store and has great ice cream, but also put your carts away. There were more carts than there were cars in parking spaces. Yeah. Put them away, Texas. Put them away, you cowards. Put your carts away. Yeah. That's why, uh, you know, the that's one of those things that you always see. And people always complain that, like, you know, you can make X amount of dollars more do pushing carts back at walmart and target than you can at some jobs which is a valid answer but hey man a lot of carts need push back it's legit it wouldn't it wouldn't be this giant job title if people just did their morale then they would actually be able to be a, on register or doing things that and you and much like the people that complain about like the lowest of the low making money yeah. Putting the carts away is an important job, and if you hadn't failed as a society to do it in the first place, you wouldn't have to complain about the people getting paid to do it. And that's just math. And that's, and that's just, desks and dorks. We did it, everyone. We made it. So <laughs> well, that was an guys. awesome way to end the episode. Uh, have a nice evening. And put stick. Put your cards back. Bye. <laughs>